Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be working on an NES and we're going to be installing the NES Slot Master made by Shaw Merlin. And it is an open source project that is available on GitHub if you'd like to go ahead and put this thing together yourself. If not, we will have some of these available on our website in the description down below. This is a do-it-yourselfer project, so you can purchase all the required parts that you need by checking out the GitHub for Shaw Merlin's project down below. We powered on the NES just to confirm that it works. In our previous NES video, we had cleaned out the cartridge slot. We'd used some deoxit. And of course that has a high success rate, but it's not the end all be all when it comes to cartridge slot issues with the NES. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try out this slot master and see what the project is like. All right, so there's not really much to it. You are using the longer Phillips screwdriver. You don't need one that's this long, that's overkill. There are six screws to remove. Some of them will come out, some of them will not. And then of course we have some screws right here around the rim of the console. Uh, so we have two over here, three right here, and we have two more here in the back, or in your case, the front. I'm gonna switch over to the drill just because I don't wanna be here all day. You may notice that there are a couple of friends inside of this console, and it's also not the cleanest of consoles. How do you suppose this got in there? A fly. I mean, I would have expected a cockroach or something, but not a fly. One of these days we'll have a scorpion in here, and then that'll be a surprise. All right, so let's go ahead and start unscrewing the remaining screws. I'd really hate to see our friend go. We have two more screws to remove, which are essentially holding down the audio AV port area. All right, and then now this thing can just completely fall apart. You will need to remove the controller port and power supply connectors. Uh, so your first one is right over here, and that one gets removed. We have two more connectors right here that need to get removed as well. You may end up needing to use pliers. So now that this thing is all in pieces, you should be able to easily disconnect the cartridge um, spring slot, whatever you want to call it. And now we've exposed the 72 pin connector over here, which looks to be in immaculate condition, but that is because we applied some deoxid to this thing a while back. So for the moment, you're going to want to set all this aside. And I would also remove the 72 pin connector while we're here because we have a little bit of prep work. Now in today's video, I'm not going to go over cleaning the entirety of the board. That's kind of like an end stage type thing. For now, we're going to go ahead and prep this part of the board right here. As you can tell, these fins Look a little tarnished. There's probably even a little bit of corrosion that needs to be taken care of. Now, I have seen people use sandpaper, a very light grit, you know, like a 50,000 or something, I'm not sure, but the object of the game is to not really remove too much material here. If anything, you want to kind of scratch it a little bit, that way it gives it a little bit of a, a bite when it gets connected to the new port that we're going to install here, and it's, uh, the same applies to the 72 pin connector. It'll also help with the connection when you're just doing that. So if you're not installing the slot master, this will help you out as well. What we're going to do here is we're we're gonna use our fiberglass pen, which I guess is just about all out. So this is essentially what you're wanting to do. And this is very, very light. We're not trying to remove a lot of material and we're mostly just trying to remove this tarnish that's on here. We're just trying to expose the copper, that way it looks vibrant. We'll probably go with some deoxid after we're done doing this. All right, so you're gonna wanna continue with taking care of all of these fins and you just repeat the process. And of course that was just one side, I'm not going to bore you by showing the second side, but it would be advisable that you do this to both sides. And now that you've finished taking care of both sides of the cartridge connector, you're going to want to take care of all that fiberglass and or the mess you've created around your area because we don't want all of that stuff getting back on the NES. And I definitely don't want the fiberglass to get all over me, so we're going to definitely take care of that. And now that you have restored the original luster of the NES slot, we can go ahead and proceed to building the NES Slot Master. And of course, due to the magic of video editing, I already have this thing 3D printed and ready to go. So we just need to prep it, and then of course it'll be ready for the slot master. Uh, so we just need to bust off a couple of pieces on this thing. I printed it with supports, and I recommend you do the same, though it may not be necessary in your scenario depending on your 3D printer. All right, and you should have something that looks like this once you're all done. And now for the fun part. So there are a couple of items that you're gonna need. Once again, everything will be linked in the description, which of course is on the bill of materials for Shaw Merlin's open source project, the Slot Master. So I'll begin by busting these off, just like that. So we have top side NES cartridge. So we're gonna go ahead and get this side connected. 
like so. So we'll do that first. We're gonna begin our soldering. We'll be using our Hako FX-951 soldering iron and of course the T15D24 soldering iron tip. Temperature really doesn't matter per se. I like to run, I think I'm gonna be running with 450C. You can probably get away with 350. It just really depends on your flux and the solder that you're using. I will of course be using leaded solder. So this project is definitely not gonna be ROHS compliant. All right, so we're gonna work on the top side first. We're gonna get that soldered up. Be nice if I had some kind of a jig to hold this thing, but I do not. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna get this thing anchored down so it'd be advisable that you solder at least one or two sides before you start soldering everything. And make sure the connector is nice and flush to the board. We apparently don't have flux in our solder, at least not enough flux. We have a bunch of these to solder, so we're just gonna speed right through it. I think I'm gonna swap out to our fancy soldering iron tip. It's the spatula tip. That way we can blast right through this. So of course it'd probably go a lot smoother if I had some flux. I'm gonna skip ahead because it's mostly just seeing the same thing over and over again. All right, and when you're all done, you should have something that looks like this. And now would be the time to decide whether you're gonna be letting the cart set the CIC or if you plan on installing the IC down here below, which I'm not going to do for the purposes of this video. I plan on allowing the cart to decide. Next thing you'll wanna do is of course install this one right here and it's gonna be facing just like this. See so yeah, it says bottom side and then of course you have the connector right there and the other one is top side and the connector's like that. And the orientation was kinda of a little weird. Uh, for reference, you can check out this one right here that I have. See bottom side right here, it's facing front. Top side facing front as well. And once again, I just like to go ahead and tack these down. And you're gonna repeat the same process as before, so we're gonna skip right ahead. When you're done, you should have something like that. And next, you'll be installing the mail slot to the bottom side board. And per our already completed one, the orientation is just like this. Then you can blast through the rest. All right, so now we have the front and back completed. Next is the ampersand. And the ampersand board is essentially gonna have the female connector on both sides, front and rear. We just finished the ampersand portion of the slot master. Now we have these to install, which are the connectors. It's essentially the expansion header. It's optional as far as the orientation. It's just like this. All right, that's one side down. Now we have one more. And it's the same thing on this one, just like that. All right, and it's all nice and soldered in now. You can install your connector. I'm gonna go in just like that. So at this point in time, I'd recommend that you clean off any of the excess flux, double check that you do not have any solder bridges, and then we'll take this to the NES. You should have something like this once everything is completed. Next thing to do is, of course, apply some deoxid. You don't need to do this, but I recommend that you do. So we're gonna wanna wipe this down a little bit with some alcohol. I'm using 99% alcohol. So you wanna use something that doesn't leave any fibers behind. I'm using these Kimtech wipes. They call up delicate task wipes. They don't leave that many particuli behind. And of course, that's what we're looking at right there. Now it's time to apply the deoxid. So if you've not cleaned this off right here, you'll wanna start with this first and then go with this. If you wanna support the channel, we of course have affiliate links down below. I'm gonna use this small stuff right here just because you, I feel you have a little bit more control. And you just apply this on both sides. You don't need to go wild with it. The manufacturer has indicated that you wanna leave this on here for an extended period of time, which to me means forever. Now it's time to put this back into the consolote. And of course, make sure your cabling is not gonna get snagged in one of these screw posts. And you just place this straight down like so. Make sure the slot master is firmly in there. We're gonna to wanna to start by putting everything back together. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that we're gonna to need to cut some metal. Because right now, this is what we're looking at and we're gonna to have to cut right here. Now, this is my first time doing this, so we'll see how nice it looks. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut from here. So you're pretty much just looking at that being cut. I'd make sure you're careful because this stuff will cut the you know what out of you. 
And you, of course, can just bend this back and forth until it comes off. So we have it just like that. You're welcome to file it down to make sure that you don't have any sharp edges. All right, so that looks like that's gonna work for us. But before we can put this on, we need to put the 3D printed piece on there. And next, of course, you'll wanna put your screws back on, but before I completely do that, I have one thing that I wanna do with this slot master, and that's, of course, to put this in there. I guess you can kinda of consider it like a dust cover or just something to show off what you can print. Make sure you put your screws back in place. Hand tighten, of course. Once you have it secured in place, you can go ahead and secure the slot master to the plastic. And once you're all done, it'll look just like this. Make sure everything is nice and secure. And now you can put your cut shielding back on. Let's go ahead and put our screws back in place. And of course, I could have probably said it earlier, but now would be a good time to go ahead and test out the console before you completely put everything back together, which we'll go ahead and do now. If you don't have the time or if you don't have the skills or equipment to put one of these things together, you can go ahead and check out our website and we may have a couple available for purchase outright. We have the majority of the console back together here. We'll go ahead and try this game out. And there we have it. But, does it work with this? Let's find out. So far, so good. Yeah. And this is what it'll look like when you get it assembled. And this is, of course, how far the games will hang out and it has no problem closing. Well, it looks like my work is done. If you found this video helpful or useful, you can leave us, you can leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.